So what is the best way to select orders as a DoorDash a Dasher here in 2022? Well, in this video, we're going to go over some must-know basics driving for DoorDash or really any food delivery app with specific examples. So let's go online. Well, rather, before that, let's talk about strategies before you even hit that Dash Now button. So yeah, strategy number one is thinking, should I even go online in my current zone or should I really use a feature that we saw more in 2021? Let me give you an example. So when I drove for DoorDash, in San Diego, California for three years, I would typically drive in my current zone, right? Literally the zone that you're currently in. And we can see it highlighted here. This is Mission Valley. But a lot of the times it would be busier and or with higher peak pay, that's the bonus pay, in one of these marketplaces. Let's say La Jolla typically or maybe Del Mar. So you can see here it says schedule. It doesn't say dash now because, of course, I'm not in La Jolla. I'm in Mission Valley. Well, again, in 2021, we really saw this newer feature, which was Dash Upon Arrival. So what's nice is you can reserve one of those other market segments that you're not currently in. And we'll see here, here back in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, it gives you some commuting time to get into that zone. And again, think about that. Is is it busier in this zone? That's why I want to do Dash Upon Arrival. And or is there a higher bonus pay? Can I make more money in essence in this market segment? Now, having said that, keep in mind the commuting miles. Those are empty miles of driving to that zone. So just think about, all right, how long is it going to really take me to get to that zone if you're using Dash Upon Arrival? All right, but let's assume we're driving in your current zone using Dash now. As long as it's busy enough, you can go online immediately. So some absolute must know basics. If you're driving a food delivery, again, on any food delivery app here in 2022, it's number one, what we talk about here, it is a cornerstone. It is the dollars to mile ratio. So how much am I getting paid for the miles driven? So you're out there driving, you're taking runs, and you're going to compare, just kind of do some mental math of, all right, the payout is this, and the mileage is this. And again, what is that dollars to mile ratio? I want you to get a dollar seventy five, and that is really a measure of efficiency. So you're not driving a ton of miles, and the pay is high. So what does that mean? Again, it is efficient. You're being efficient with your vehicle. You're not putting a lot of miles, or I guess minimum amount of miles, and you're getting the maximum amount of pay. Now, directly related to the dollars to mile ratio is the dollars to time ratio. And you can kind of figure out what that means, right? It's how much am I getting paid and how much time is this run going to take? Now, this is a measure of volume. So typically, and again, on any food delivery app, you should be able to do at least two deliveries an hour. But if you have a smart dollars to time ratio, it's not taking 45 minutes for one run, then maybe you can do three to four per hour. And you're coupling that with the dollar to mile ratio. That's how you're going to maximize your pay per hour. And our third staple of a drive-in for DoorDash or food delivery here in 2022 is your margin. So your expenses versus your revenue. That difference is, of course, your margin. And we want you to be at the highest margin possible. So like we mentioned, the least amount of miles and the highest pay. That should always be your goal. It's maximizing your margin and your pay per hour. And then number four, something that I feel gets ignored. So pay attention to this. Drop a like on this video if you're getting value so far, but as I briefly mentioned, is the commuting miles. So commuting miles, as I stated prior, are empty miles. You're driving to a location for whatever reason, or even a staging or a waiting area with no assignment. No, I'm not a CPA or a tax professional. The following is not legal or professional tax advice, but typically commuting miles, again, you don't have an assignment, 
And it's typically when you're offline. So you're not even online with any of these apps. You're not even intending to do business. So since you're not online really with any app, again, you're not intending to do business. You're intending just to drive to that other location. Generally, those miles are not tax deductible. And then lastly, one of the basics that I always think about on really any side hustle app is positioning. So here's my marketplace here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and you need to know, all right, where are the busy zones? Where are the more affluent zones? Where are the power strips that we say? The areas that are really dense with restaurants and or ideally dense with customers that are ordering from those restaurants. So you want what we describe as ping pong orders. So really, I make a drop off and I immediately get an order request. Why? Because I'm in a busy zone with customers in those power strips. Okay, so knowing those basics driving for DoorDash this year, I want to give you examples of the several types of orders, a standard order, a stacked order, Dash Mart orders, and a shop and deliver orders. Now here's an example of a standard order. It is one pickup, it is one drop off. Also keep in mind, you got about 45 seconds or 90 seconds on a stacked order to make up your mind if you wanna accept this or not. So this one from Owl's Fish and Chicken, $6 payout, we can see there. Now it does include the expected tip. We have the predicted miles, 6.6 miles. So let's think about everything that we talked about. So number one, the dollars to mile ratio, how much am I getting paid for the miles driven? So actually I'm getting paid less than the mileage here, $6 for 6.6 miles. And remember, our goal for you is minimum of $1.75. So number two, the dollars to time ratio. Now, as you're driving, you can see the time on the top left. It is a minute before 8 p.m. And it says it delivered by 8.22 p.m. So... DoorDash is predicting 23 minutes to make this run. So what I like to do is take that time and the pay and just kind of multiply. All right, if it's going to take 20 minutes and then I would do three of those, if I got three $6 orders, then I would make $18 in that hour. And you really do need to pay attention to that because some runs, it could say 12, 15 minutes versus others. It could be 30 to 40 minutes. And that could be based on a restaurant's wait time and or the distance. And then the margin there, not great. Again, based on that dollar to mile ratio. Now there's no commuting miles because I am online here. Now, the only real good thing here is positioning. So the starting location, the pickup, we can see it based on that shopping bag icon. And then the home icon is the customer drop off. Now, this comes with a knowing your marketplace. So the premise of this channel is we are a team. I need you to do some market research as well. So I know here in Pittsburgh, that area is still busy. But again, dollars to mile, your pay kind of supersedes everything there. So let's decline this one. So nextly, let's take a look at a stacked order. And you'll see this on really any food delivery app. So lead in for this. So a stacked order, it is two or more assignments for one driver. It can be three restaurants. I think I've seen maybe one, four restaurants pick up and drop off. Let us know down below if you've gotten a quad pickup here, but generally you're going to get two pickup locations. So this one, Papa John's, 7-Eleven, quoted to pay of $14.50. Now, I'm liking the dollars to mile ratio much better here, closer to what we're looking at. So $14.50 for 7.4 miles, and that makes more sense. Now, the dollars to time ratio does make sense. It's going to take a little bit longer because, of course, it's two different pickups and two different drop-offs here. So I need to make sense of, all right, $14.50, it's going to take whatever it is, 40 minutes or so. Am I happy with that? The margin's decent there, but I'm really looking at the positioning, the ending locations, because obviously there's two drop-offs, two home icons, but I don't necessarily know at the time of accepting which customer is going to get to the order first, followed by the second customer. So I need to think, all right, are both locations, would they be okay for an ending destination? Would it keep me busy? This one's really a toss up. Let me know down below in the comments if you'd accept this one. Frankly, for me, I don't think this is too bad. It really just depends on how busy this shift would be. Next, we'll take a look at Dashmart orders. Now that is something that we 
saw more of more expansion in 2021. So I certainly would look at Dashmart orders. Let us know in the comments if you currently have Dashmarts in your marketplace. But same kind of thing here. So 1050 in this example for 12.3 miles. So not a stellar dollars to mile ratio. This one also is going to take about 45 minutes plus on this one for just 1050. So our goal for you this year in 2022 is $25 an hour, really on any app in the gig economy. So 1050. If it's going to take 45 minutes, chances are, unless I get lucky, I might not hit 25 for that hour. So this one, of course, was in San Diego at the time. So market research, again, positioning. Would you be happy driving this far south in this marketplace? And then lastly, any kind of shop and deliver orders, which is exactly what it sounds like. So it could be a retail location, let's say like Walgreens. I'm going to go in, I'm going to shop for that list of items, or it could be an actual restaurant. You'll put the order in yourself, you'll wait, take the order, and then deliver it to the customer. So the same kind of things there. I'm looking at the basics. Now, really, for shop and deliver, I believe the dollars to time ratio really trumps a lot of things on this, because if I have to go in to a retail location or a restaurant, that's the biggest thing that I'm thinking about. So if you do see a shop and deliver order and the app will tell you it is shop and deliver, look at that time, compare that to the current time and just your own experience, you know, driving there. If it's a fast food place, is there going to be a line in the drive through? Really think about that. And then any shop time before you accept that order. And then lastly, just on a 2022 update that you need to be aware of. So if you didn't know, the IRS here in the US designated standard mileage rates for 2022 2.5 cents higher than the rates from last year. So this year for every business mile driven and a business mile is again online intending to do business as long as you are online, you can write off 58 and a half cents per business mile. And just keep in mind, just to make sense of that, since that is up from the 56 cents of 2021, in essence, you'll get to write off an extra dollar for every 40 miles driven. So post your order selection questions and more down below in the comments. And if you did get a value in this video, can you definitely drop me a like? And you can also click or tap screen here for my newest video, as well as a video recommended for you. And I'll see you in the next one.